Good evening and welcome to the regular meeting of the Worcester City Council scheduled for this Monday, July 3rd, 2017. It is after 7.30 p.m. Everyone is present, so we do have a quorum. The agenda will remain as presented. And at this time, I would ask you to stand and join the members of City Council in reciting the <coughs> evening. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you all very much. Next item is the approval of the minutes from the June 19, 2017 Council meeting. Is there a motion to approve? So moved. Motion to approve by Ms. Kanapik. Is there a second? Second. Second by Mr. Sylvester. All in favor, please say aye. Aye. Those opposed, say nay. The meeting minutes of June 19 are approved. Communications from Mayor. Welcome, Mayor. Uh, your uh, posse cadre is not with you. <laughs> <laughs> They uh, took vacation time thinking that we might not have had this this meeting when they they signed up for the vacation time. So I have them here uh, with my, my uh, trusty uh, finance director who is acting as uh, secretary. He's mine tonight. <laughs> <laughs> um, just a few things to talk about since last we met. Um, I had told you at our last council meeting that Ohio Magazine was coming for a visit, I think, the next day. Uh, it was on February. Or it was February. Is on June 20th, uh, and uh, three members from Ohio Magazine did come on uh, that morning about 9.20. Uh, Linda Fiegler, who is the senior editor for Ohio Magazine, uh, Rachel Chilcott, who is their art director, and Sam, and I don't have Sam's last name, uh, she's an intern with them, as, and she was one of the photographers. So, so they spent uh, from 9.20 in the morning till 5.30 that afternoon in our city and, uh, and with us. And uh, we had many community members uh, help in, in the presentation. Uh, they saw, saw the downtown uh, in, in many, many ways. Um, they saw things like Christmas Run Park and the Play Lab at Cornerstone. And they saw the Historical Society where the people were dressed up as docents and, and showed them around. They went to Ohio Light Opera and saw a, 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 a dress rehearsal and a behind the scenes uh, view of Ohio Light Opera. Um, met with the College of Worcester. Uh, they, uh, we had planned to take them out and show them the industrial corridor, uh, but they said we'd rather spend more time downtown, so we went back downtown, met with many of the store owners. Um, yeah, they got a view of our downtown from the top of uh, the Briggs Financial Building. It was a, a very nice uh, view of our downtown. Lots of good pictures out of that. So, so it, it, it was a wonderful day. Uh, we ended up uh, out at Seacrest Arboretum and uh, showed them around uh, that piece of our city. So, uh, I think things went very well. Uh, we won't know any type of. Uh, uh, whether we get a nod or not, we are uh, in the running or they wouldn't have spent that time here in our city. So uh, it's the magazine I think comes out in November of this year and so we're, we're hopeful that, uh, that we would would be a repeat in, in the uh, best hometown uh, in Ohio category. So, so looking forward to that. Um, had the pleasure of celebrating with uh, the Downtown Farmers Market this past Saturday. Uh, they're celebrating their 20th year in uh, existence here in our, in our downtown. In 1997, a group of four vendors got together and started uh, Farmer's Market, which has now expanded to uh, uh, multiple vendors. It, it's hard to say each Saturday how many are going to be there because they, they come and go depending on what their crops are to, to, to sell. So, uh, but there are times we have 20, 20 plus vendors there. So, so uh, a great celebration. We're very thankful to have them uh, doing a farmer's market in our downtown. Uh, that brings a, a lot of uh, uh, very good hometown feel to our, our community and a very uh, nice cultural aspect for us. So, so we uh, thank them for, for their efforts. Lastly, I want to uh, talk about something that uh, unfortunately I, you, you don't like to talk about, but 
in the world we live in, uh, and with the computer age, uh, there is a darker side that uh, there are people out there who are trying to get into our databases. And uh, the governor's office had that problem here very recently. Uh, drug companies as large as Merck has had uh, their, their uh, information hacked. Uh, we know two hospitals in Pennsylvania in the last few weeks that had their information hacked. Um, uh, Target uh, in this past year has had its information hacked. So, so many, many examples. In fact, uh, in discussions with our IT director, uh, Bob Eshelman here in the city, I asked him, I said, how often are we uh, attacked? He said, every single minute of the day. Said you are constantly being attacked. Uh, what uh, we are, are anticipating, and, and I say that because we truly don't know yet. The FBI has been running this investigation. Uh, they are the ones that did, that identified that we had been hacked, and uh, they uh, have controlled the message. In fact, the first I could mention it to you folks uh, was with the press release that release that went out over the weekend and in fact uh, we didn't think that we were going to be able to do that until this evening or Wednesday of this week where uh, towards the end of this week the FBI says that there's supposed to be more information coming forward. So this press release that I gave you all a copy of is exactly what we uh, posted on our website and also uh, posted to Facebook and also released to the media and uh, so it, it tells exactly what what we are allowed to, to discuss at this point in time. From what Bob Eshelman told me though, uh, there are people in the world that uh, have the knowledge to send out um, type of uh, uh, programs to actually search all, in, all of the internets and they, they go out and look for weak spots. And most of them just keep looking and looking and looking until it feel, uh, this, this automated thing thinks it's found something that's weak and then it pings the person back that, that set the thing in motion. And then at that point, then they do a full all-out barrage on, on that target. And this is what we have been uh, anticipating is, is what happened in, in our uh, dispatch center here, the, the uh, Worcester Ashland Regional Council of Government. Um, they have taken one file, and uh, of that, uh, that has potentially up to 200,000 um, uh, possibilities within it. Now, uh, the possibilities are greatest if people have had any interaction with the police, uh, either in the city of Ashland, Worcester, Orville, or Kidron, who we dispatch for. Uh, within the last 10 years where a police uh, report was written because that's where the, your name would be on that police report, your driver's license would be on that police report, your date of birth would be on that police report, and your social security number would be on that police report. And that's how all dispatch centers um, operate. Uh, in, in fact, uh, uh, Cody Post, who is, is our acting director, said uh, he believes that it's a state requirement that you have this information within your, your dispatch center because they're interacting with that database all the time. So if you have never had uh, any interaction with uh, a police uh, uh, operation within, say, approximately the last 10 years, then the chances are you have no records that would be we do not know at this point uh, exactly what it is because the FBI still is in their investigation. We are starting to put together uh, what possibilities uh, might exist and uh, so we're, we're, we're uh, putting together a file of, of possibles and once we get the firm report then we'll uh, go through. We uh, will be required to notify anyone whose records we believe uh, might be compromised and, and the, that condition is that if that file was actually open, we have to assume that it was compromised. So that's, those are the people that we'll, we will notify and, um, and 
there is a, well, we do have a, a full insurance coverage, and so uh, the insurance will be uh, carrying the load for uh, notification to these people and also uh, having a, an insurance coverage for a period of time to make sure that they are, are, are as safe as we can possibly provide. So with that, that's a, really, I've probably gone beyond the limit I, you know, I should have at this point in time. I will be happy to answer questions, uh, but if, if, if they uh, go too far, I, I will ask them to go into an executive session to, to, uh, to give you any other information I might have. So with that, uh, that is the report tonight, and uh, I'm happy to, to try to answer things for you. Thank you, Mayor. That brings us to petitions, communications from public. Now, uh, Ms. Anderson, Mr. Clark, and I apologize if I mispronounce your name, Ms. Arzuego. Okay. We'll, we'll hold your uh, participation until we get to the uh, public uh, uh, hearing on the alley vacation. So that leaves one uh, individual who has uh, uh, signed up, uh, Greg Garris. Uh, Stand, state your name, and uh, tell us what you had in mind about uh, the uh, proposed budget, please. My name is Greg Garris at 347 North Trent Street, and I'm glad Mr. Director of Finance are here. It's and just too. a clarification of the meeting two weeks ago. I had been barraged by people who saw the video and heard us speak but didn't hear any answers of how much the cell tower lawsuit is costing us fiduciarily, how often we're dipping into the general or the miscellaneous fund, Mr. Ansel, do we have any clarification on that? And, uh, for example, let's start with that one. Are litigation costs coming out of the general fund or the miscellaneous fund? Either one of you knows what you're talking about or not between you and Mr. Director of Administration, if you recall that conversation back then. Or one of you is misrepresenting the facts. So the people are coming to me. Yes, there, to there, is, there is no misrepresentation of the facts. I'm cutting you off. You apparently did not pay attention last week when Linda Applebaum told you it was $5,000 and it came out of her fund where there is funds set aside for litigation purposes. Actually, I had left before if she did state that. I wasn't in the room at that point. She told me to give her a well, call. Well, she did, an an she she did answer it, and you could have called her, so. But it would be nice, Mr. Fleitendake, to speak into the camera and answer those questions. You need to berate me. Well, this is not a d debating society, and as my rules have always been, is you were supposed to comment on it, then uh, if you want questions answered, then I, I suggest you contact the administration or your council person ahead of, ahead of time. And if, they, if you don't get adequate uh, uh, answers, then I would address your council person and say, I, I asked this of the administration and I didn't get this information. Mr. I would just like to highlight, uh, again, Mr. Garris, um, your naivete as it relates to the budget, which is public record, could be well served if you did a little research from your challenges and your questions because the director of law has a budget line item for litigation of which traditionally we never exceed that budget, but those budget dollars are allocated for her to utilize for support and litigation and these type of processes, of which, which this one is earmarked to be about $5,000, but she has a six-figure budget line item for litigation. If we use it, the monies are there within our budget. If we don't have to use them, then it's not an expensed budget item. I don't know if you really understand the budget process, but you airmark funds based on your departmental projections. If you use them, it's in your budget. If, it, if they go beyond budget, they have to come back to council. If it's within budget, they're allocated those expenditures on an annual basis. We're well within our budget. Reassure your 
people that are inquiring that yes, we have funds set aside for these type of potential expenses and the expense associated with this litigation defense is about $5,000. I think that answers your question. Thank you. From the general or miscellaneous fund? It's in her budget. It's in the general fund. Everybody has a general fund allocation, so whether it be finance to operate, um, uh, the law department, the IT group, uh, the police chief, the fire chief, they're all within the general fund, but they have their budgets, of which you've been here long enough and have reviewed the budgetary process. But I don't know if you really grasp the budgetary process, Mr. Garris, obviously. Um, you don't ask the right questions, so you don't probably understand, but... We've responded to your question, Mr. President. I would like to close the discussion. It is allocated. It's within our budget. It's about $5,000 projected. Thank you for the question. And thank you for clarifying whether it was miscellaneous from the Director of Admin or general from you. Thank you. You're welcome. <coughs> All right. Now, we have a uh, public hearing. I don't think we have any committee reports. Uh, so. We're just going to roll right into the alley uh, vacation uh, of uh, from uh, Maiden Lane uh, to Maple Street. Uh, there was a nice attachment of photographs showing what this alley had. Well, that, those photographs from like early spring. Right. Now you kid, there's no way you can actually I got a lot of my I would just want to su suggest that, as you can see, this is not, not a and alley and that you can uh, navigate over. Yeah, I had to add. I, I and and we'll, have your, we'll give you your chance to... Oh, okay. Because okay, okay. we haven't even opened the public yeah, hearing, okay. but I was just kind of prefacing that before I turned it oh, over to Mr. Albright. So, without further ado, I'll turn the public hearing over to you. Right. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, this public hearing, as you said, is uh, responding to a request to vacate the public alley running east-west direction from Maiden Lane to Maple Street, but it's also only part, about halfway of that uh, alley. There's a part of the alley that actually is in existence, the eastern, uh, approximately half of it. Um, uh, this particular alley, as we saw in the pictures, and I thank you for the pictures, I went down today. I've been in that area over the years uh, two or three times, so I knew it was in pretty sad shape for an alley, uh, and it's been vacated, obviously, for quite a while. And we can see by the pictures that, uh, in fact, when, you, when I parked my car and by the, by the uh, park there and walked across the street and there was a bar, like a pipe bar that serves as kind of a, protection so you don't fall into the creek and down over the, the side. And it's rather steep, so obviously no vehicle could could uh, go through there. And then, of course, uh, if you go a bit further east, why it's uh, uh, a lot of uh, grown-up underbrush and, and so on, and uh, here's a big stump. Uh, so uh, there's no way this could be an alley. It would take a great deal of money to make it an alley. and. It hasn't been used as an alley for probably decades, maybe even more. So um, we do have, uh, there are seven parcels, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Uh, Mr. Blackwell uh, represents, the, and I'm going to skip the 650, uh, is in front of all the lot numbers. So he has, he has 1191, uh, two and 1191. Uh, those are the first two properties when you go north off or east rather off of Maple Street um, on Hancock and in 1536 I uh, chose not to sign so what we were thinking about and I thought the law director would be here but my memory is correct uh, as long as we have a majority of the uh, parcels signed uh, and whose owner signed this petition then uh, the petition is valid and we have five prop, uh, la, la, parcels out of the seven. Um, this happens in the city of Worcester because if you go back in history, a lot of properties had, uh, in the horse and buggy days, had oftentimes a barn in the rear, and uh, that's where the horses were kept, 
and alleys were very important for access to the properties. Obviously, we're beyond that. Uh, some alleys in a more uh, active area, certainly in the business area, are often uh, maintained and have been maintained for maybe 100 years or more. Um, but in the rural areas where, in a, not a rural, but in a, in a um, residential area like this, uh, you know, the people don't own horses, they don't have barns in the back of their property, a lot of the alleys cease to be used, and in this case, this one hasn't been used for decades. So it makes a lot of sense, and I, I uh, certainly support, and I hope council will support, uh, the vacation of this of this alley because it, it's just almost non-existent and uh, what normally happens is the property that the width and the depth of of the alley uh, is can be uh, ascertained and that property will then be shared by the adjacent property owners uh, right down the middle as I understand and uh, I heard Mr. Uh, uh, Clark indicate that one of the motivations was to uh, gain access to his portion of this vacated or hopefully vacated alley and clean it up and uh, by these pictures <laughs> that's something that certainly needs to happen so we want to open this hearing and uh, I've said all I think I need to say uh, I'd like to hear anybody in the audience uh, who would like to speak to this uh, for this uh, uh, alley vacation just give us your name and your address and uh, tell us what you'd like to say. Uh, David Clark, uh, 520 Hancock Street, Worcester, Vermont. And uh, pretty much summed it up. <laughs> but, I'm sorry, uh, I didn't. You pretty much summed it oh, up. Oh, okay. Yeah. Go, Go right ahead. Uh, yeah, it is in pretty disarray. There's, uh, you know, I've had to catch like three pounds of coming from the area. And uh, I do have uh, actually a garage that uh, joins that or that I can have access to it but because it was the city's I didn't know whether I really had the right to go in and clean my way to it and be able to get to it but now that it's going to be hopefully vacant then I can get to that and kind of refurbish that garage and get things you know cleaned up in that area and all brushed and, and that you know that end of neighborhood isn't really the best so you know there would very well be someone sleeping like here someday and when I stood on the part of the alley that uh, runs on the east side of your properties that's open uh, I, it's higher than your property and so when I stood back there I went back to look at that end that east end of this hopefully vacated portion of the alley uh, I could see that your backyard is in very nice shape, cleaned up. Well, but to tell you the truth, I bought them two houses, the ones beside each other. Right. They're in process. <laughs> so whatever well, the backyard. in good shape is going to be eventually. But, uh, uh, yeah, those actual backyards look like that alley prior to the meat I could tell because <laughs> the last time I looked was several years ago. And, it did not look as clean, yeah, so I've, thank I've you for doing that. We appreciate that. Yeah. Would someone else like to speak in <coughs> support of the vacation? Would anybody like to speak against the vacation? If I, if I may add one more thing. Sure. It says in a, in a phrase here at the bottom of this on the back side of the map, Okay. Uh, that page is missing off our. Um, Action and 
form a signature to the President, Council, and Mayor. I'll start off with this week. Usually, usually we have an ordinance. I don't know why. We don't have, yeah, we don't have any. Yeah, we don't have an ordinance tonight. Uh, to uh, and our next meeting isn't going to be for a while. August. A month, right? I don't know why we didn't have an ordinance. Yeah, I don't understand that either. Yeah. My information is that this wasn't a rush type of thing. Uh, it was something that they wanted to get on as far as a public hearing uh, and get that process started, but that it was not something that needed to be done before council went on break. Okay. So what we'll do then is, um, you know, it's had its public hearing, and then you, you will... Direct, or direct to the law director to have a, a, a an ordinance that to this this effect for our next meeting, and that next meeting will be for the sake of the folks in the audience. It'll be August twenty first. August twenty first. Yeah, I'm sorry about that. Uh, polls, anyone opposed to it on council? No. Well, I, I just did have a, a question. Just to clarify, sure. I, I was with John. We walked that before. Remember? Yes. Right behind Tim G. Yes. Arms. Right. And it's it's atrocious. There's no doubt about it. I, I, they said there was an alley there. I couldn't believe there was an alley there. There's a stump this big, laying across it. And where's the alley at? Yeah. But the, the 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 concern that I have is the the creek that is in the back. Uh, is that part of the alley that we're vacating? Because that looks like a good sized waterway. It is. I mean, does that run through? Would we, I mean, would I, that revert to there? Because, I mean, if something goes in the waterway, where is it going after that? Well, it goes under, it goes under the street. Is that part of the city? Does that drain into the sewage system? or the? Why don't we do this? Or what is it? Since we have some time, between now and our next meeting in August, why don't we ask the administration to do a little research there? Maybe Roger can look into that, well, or that, the law it's director. A normal water course. It actually it actually runs to Apple Creek. It's a normal water course. It just yeah, like, it's it's like, like it's and you like don't a, intend to fill that in. Oh no, that's that is, that what is I'm Okay, so you're just going to let that continue yeah. on I, that waterway. Well, you can't do, you know, you can't do anything with a water course that's going to change right. well, how well, it's going to affect those downstream. That's true. That's yes. just the question. Well, that's, that's what I was, that's what I was making sure. It also is like, it's split by the water. Yeah, it is. I mean, right. it's, it's right down the middle. I mean, there, there's literally no way, unless you've got a whole Franklin right in front of the house over <laughs> my, my feeling is... My concern too would be to dump if someone were to dump paint or other chemicals into it, and it's going downstream. And I understand, but well, that can happen now. Yeah. Well, yeah, I mean, that could be. Actually, I'm a, I am a painter. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I really know, but I, you know, I would never do that. That would violate the EPA or the <laughs> jail. I think we yeah, have uh, some ordinances. You know, that goes right into the park. Right. And, yeah. and believe me, I'll be. I mean, I'm not a. Uh, I used to stick in I keep an eye on things around there and try Good. to. Well, I, I think. I'm appreciative of that. Uh, and I Along assume. Because I know him very well. Yeah. 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 No, normally, normally, when we vacate an alley, it's all f pretty well flat land, might be overgrown. Mm -hmm. But uh, after we vacate it, uh, I think the pr adjacent property owners then have it surveyed and have it marked. So they each know where they're. Well, there's probably already surveyed, and it, it would just. It, Somebody'd have it, to put some markers in there, some a, stakes. It's on a plat, and what would happen is the uh, ordinance vacating the alley gets recorded, so that it would then show on their property records that they have usually. I don't know. Usually, 16 there's 16 feet. feet that you know their property has. A, 16 feet extra depth by however wide right. their, uh, their property is. Right. So. Uh, yeah, and, um, this cr and this creek mm -hmm. is not going to run in a straight vertical, uh, straight line east and west. It's, I think it's on an angle from the north, well, it would be what? Northeast 
maybe down toward the southwest. And when you, when you see it and you're standing there on Maple Street looking at it due east at that pipe that's like a protection there, it's not running straight, it's running like right. this. So, so right now, some of that creek, as Mr. Clark says, is already on some other That's right. property owners. Exactly. All they're asking is for that rectangle that is that portion of the alley be vacated. vacated. I assume that the city isn't going to improve it or maintain it, nor would we want to. Or if have no, we? If no one's vehemently opposed to this, I'm just trying to say if Mr. Clark wants to begin cleaning it up rather than waiting uh, until August 21st, <laughs> I, I think we kind of give us <laughs> him our dispensation and we, you know, the paperwork will fall. Well, if that's uh, how you view it, I, I certainly would uh, be in favor of that. Well, certainly we haven't cleaned it up yet, so we would appreciate it if you would do that. <laughs> the administration has no uh, issue with that. Either. Yeah, I, I figured that. I was being a little facetious there. So the plan then is when On we have August our first... On August 21st, we'll, we'll, have we'll, a, we'll have an ordinance. Okay. He wants to get a head start since that's the better... Most of the better summer. part of the summer is going to run until then. I, I would give him uh, my my blessing and I assume council would follow suit so do we need some kind of vote or, or should, should no. I be here present the 21st? No. You, you, don't you don't have, have to be, be. Okay. you can't be you know if you want you know but uh, I, I think <laughs> I think it's uh, pretty much uh, settled and it's just okay. going to be perfunctory come the uh, 21st of August Mr. Silvestri I did just have one question and that was um your properties to the south side of the alley are 789 and 788, right? Um, yes. yes. But then when you gave your address, it was 520 Hancock. Is, it, is your residence on the other side of the street? No. The numbers, so is, the plot numbers the are not oh, the same okay, as the okay. house numbers. Yeah, I don't numbers. And okay, okay. okay. Well, those are the parcel numbers. I got you. Right. And, and the 65. Is a designation that Worcester gets. So if you see a 65, that real estate is in the uh, city of Worcester. And actually, as uh, you know, you were talking surveying. I went to Gaspari's because when I bought the places, I wanted to see a bottom right. You know, mm -hmm. I couldn't afford to survey. <laughs> I mean, unless I really emptied my bank account and we started a lot. But he looked on his records, which is very, you know, good. And he's seen no surveying in my house whatsoever, ever. Because uh, I got an eight, my house is 1865, my one. And he couldn't, he's seen Miller's, there was a pin for Miller's, but that's all there was. So he didn't even know. He, he didn't even know that there was an alley there. He was like, I, I don't even believe it. Yeah, and, and like I said, the legislation will vacate it and then they, on the map, at the map office, that uh, does show that that alley is dedicated and that uh, reference the uh, legislation so that people know that it now so has increased by X number of square feet. Okay, that being said, when can I actually go to the map office and prepare my ID? Yeah, it's to August 20th. Yeah. Mm -mm. That just get. Done Let's automatically do yeah. on the on the tax map it will reference alley vacated by ordinance number X Y Z this date uh, and uh, in uh, recorded in uh, volume and page number. Okay. So you don't have to do anything with your deed if and when you sell the real estate, then uh, you know, it'll, it'll just be. A, as it is a lot number, okay. rather than meets and bounds. All right, so that will that will take effect immediately. That attaching to my as soon as it's re technically as soon as it's recorded, okay. they'll automatically take effect. You don't have to do any. You won't feel any pain. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> and you won't have to do anything. Oh, I just right. I, I'm just kidding. You, I, you won't even get a twinge that it was done. It'll just be done. <laughs> we'll see. Because I talked to uh, 
Diane Miller and her husband, mm -hmm. and they was uh, they be maybe possibly willing to uh, be accept theirs for the cleanup because they they wrote bad and stuff. I can't believe they're not here, really. But yeah. but so you know that, what I was saying is what I was getting at is because that's got to be uh, recorded if they're wanting to uh, make theirs mine then I would have to know a, a period of time when that would actually take effect so I could go on with that process. Here, here's the bad news about being an attorney. He said Diane and her husband. I did not see well Diane's husband. When I talked to them as a couple, as a married couple, but Diane, by, yeah, Diane is totally willing to do that. But I didn't see her husband's name on this. She owns the property. He's a, he's a property manager. I think one thing might be clear, though, is that this recording that you're talking about, Mr. President, uh, will not take place until after we actually pass an ordinance. So it will take place after the 21st of August. Yeah, of August. Okay. And at that that's, point, you can approach Diane. I'm not going to see what my timeline was. And, right. And then that, I don't want to go bug the map office or tag yeah. the office. Or, at that point, you can approach Diane about them deeding that over to you. Right, right, yeah, yeah. Okay, thank you so much. Mm -hmm. right. Thank you. Uh, I then ask that we declare that the public hearing uh, is over. Okay, we will consider the public hearing on the alley vacation that runs the east-west direction from uh, Maiden Lane to Maple Street is being... Uh, heard before council and that uh, the next uh, bit uh, would be to have the formal legislation. So thank you all for coming. Thank you for uh, the uh, the future cleanup down there. It will look very nice after you get done. Thank you. Thank you. And that brings us to old business, which you're welcome to leave and you're okay. welcome to stay. Thank you, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Mary. Have a nice 4th of July. Thank you for your efforts. That brings us to the old business, which is the third reading and resolution number 2017-34, which is the annual tax budget. It'll be presented by Mr. Ansel. In this third reading, we'll be expected to vote on it uh, this evening. But uh, if our acting clerk or council will do so, and we'll give him his uh, reading test now, read the title. Of the resolution 2017-34, a resolution providing for the annual tax budget for 2018. Well done, Mr. Doherty. I appreciate it. Mr. Ansel, the floor is yours. Yes, for the sake of brevity, this is the third reading of the 2018 annual tax budget for the city of Worcester. As we are aware, this has to be forwarded to the Wayne County Auditor before July 20th. We've had time, six weeks, to review the information contained herein, and uh, we're ready now to uh, adopt this this evening for submission to the Wayne County Auditor. So I would motion to adopt. Motion to adopt uh, by Mr. Ansel. Is there a second? Second. Second by Mr. Sylvester. Any further comments? Would you like to grill the uh, acting clerk of council here? <laughs> I'll hold him down. <laughs> Seeing none, would you please call the roll on the motion to adopt? All right. Dean of Council, Mr. Albright. Yes. Mr. Sylvester. Yes. Mr. Sanders. Yes. Mr. Myers. Yes. Ms. Kanapik. Yes. Mr. Cavan. Yes. And Mr. Anderson. Yes. Resolution number 2017-34. And I assume we'll get that in timely to uh, Ms. Underwood. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, thank you very much. We have no new legislation, so nothing under new business. Uh, we'll have miscellaneous and we'll give uh, you the first word Mr. Ansel. Nothing this evening Mr. President. Have a great fourth everyone. Thank you. Mr. Cavan. 
uh, as likewise have a great fourth safe fourth. Thank you. Ms. Knappick. I just want to say congratulations on the 20th anniversary for the downtown farmers market. That's really a wonderful asset for the city of Worcester. Wanted to congratulate the Chamber Small Businesses of the Year Braille Law Firm, which is the our next door neighbors here, and Pine Tree Barn, and congratulate all those uh, who were the worthily nominated, and um, wish everyone a very safe and happy holiday. Okay, Mr. Myers. Uh, just wanted to say happy holidays to everybody. Have a safe summer time. We'll see you all back in the fall. Thank you, Andre, for the information earlier. I appreciate the details. Thank you. Mr. Sanders. Nothing to add. Mr. Sylvester. Have a great fourth. We thank God for the freedom that we enjoy here in America. And finally, Mr. Albright. Well, I'll be very brief. Uh, it's something I'd like to have the administration think about, maybe including in that the next water bill. Maybe you want to talk it over with some of your people. Um, maybe you don't think it's appropriate to call people's attention to it, but if, if unless it's my imagination running wild, I've seen an increase in the number of people who uh, pull their cars for some reason into their front yard or to their side yard, uh, thinking that probably that's just fine. And we all know here on council that that is not according to the zoning code. And uh, you don't just make a parking lot or an extension of your driveway by parking a vehicle in the yard. And uh, usually we find out about that because the neighbors don't like it and they call one of us. But driving around being kind of a picky dude that I am, uh, I notice things like that. And I feel for the residents, and I think it's not deliberate. I think it's just uh, just an accident. Uh, they, the folks are not maybe aware of the fact that that's something that you can't do. There's a way to make, uh, if your driveway isn't wide enough, there's a way to widen it, but you have to go through the city and get the information from the city how that is done. So possibly the way to get the word out. I don't know if the reporter is going to <laughs> include this in tonight's um, summary of events, but other than that, it might be maybe a, since a lot of people get the water bill, that might be a way to, uh, water and sewer bill, that could be the way to maybe just remind folks uh, that, uh, you know, there are rules and regs when it comes to a parking or not parking a vehicle uh, in the yard. Some people put it in the front yard and put a for sale sign on it. So uh, since uh, we have no meetings for about a month, I thought I would just bring it up. But I certainly don't want to spoil the spirit of a happy fourth, which I wish for everyone here in this room and throughout our city, and uh, a safe one. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Albright. And I want to personally thank every member of council, seeing we are on the eve of the 4th of July, of giving of yourself and participating as a member of the uh, Worcester uh, City Council. Uh, you not only serve and serve well, you also, and I know as well, suffer sometimes the sling and arrows of public opinion, and that's <laughs> not for everyone, and I appreciate all of you participating in that great experiment that started almost 241 years ago, tomorrow, called democracy. And uh, I'm proud to serve with each and one of them. Thank you. Thank, Thank you very you much. much. Thank you very much. Dean of Council has moved to adjourn. Is there a second? Second. Second, second. Mr. Sylvester, beat you off to the punch there. <laughs> and all in favor, please say aye. 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 We're adjourned. Hoorah. Thank you.